Okay, let's look at this question from November 2019. It's a grade 11 Newton Laws question from 2019. It says, a four kilogram block is pulled up a frictionless inclined plane or a frictionless incline by a constant force F acting parallel to the incline as shown below. The incline makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. The block moves at constant velocity. The moment we see constant velocity, we know there is no acceleration. The acceleration is zero. Okay, so that's going to be an important part of this question. State Newton's first law of motion in words. This is a definition you must learn from your guidelines. A body will remain in its state of rest or motion at a constant velocity unless a non-zero resultant or net force acts on it. Now it says to you, draw a labeled free body diagram showing all the forces acting on the block. And it's three marks, so for three marks, we know that we are only going to have three forces. So you make your dot in the center. The first thing that's going on here is that this object has particles in it, so it has a weight. So we can put Fg or the weight downwards. The second thing that we know is that there's a force F acting up the hill. So we draw F at approximately the right angle and label it F. And then because the object is on a surface, we have to put in the normal force. So I recommend you use your set square to be able to draw your normal force at right angles to this force that's acting up the hill. Remember, if your forces are not arrows, you won't get marks. If your forces are not labeled, you won't get marks. And if your forces are not coming out of the dot, you will not get marks. So now it says to you, calculate the magnitude of the perpendicular component of the weight of the block. So if we look at my diagram here, this is a force diagram, and this is what the examiner wants to see. But if we wanted to, I'm just going to draw on this diagram for space. This is Fg perpendicular to the plane, and this here is Fg parallel to the plane. And these two forces are way more useful to us than the um, plane Fg force because the plane Fg force is not in line with anything and we may not add vectors unless they are in a straight line. So this is going to be helpful to us in our calculations. What is the perpendicular component of the weight of the block? That is what we call Fg perpendicular. And then you know that Fg perpendicular is going to be Fg, which is the weight, cos theta. Okay, so Fg is the weight. Weight is equal to your mass, which is 4 kilograms, times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8. And my angle here is 30, so it's times the cos of 30 degrees. So if you put that in your calculator, you should end up with 33,95 and it is a force, so we measure it in newtons. Remember to put your units always. So that is the magnitude. They don't want the direction, so that's fine. We can just leave it as 33,95 newtons. Then it says, calculate the magnitude of force F. So if we look at our diagram over here, we've got force F over here. And opposing it, we've got Fg parallel. So those are my two forces that are in a straight line parallel to the plane. So if we want to find force F, we can use Newton's second law, okay? And F net equals Ma. But what we know, because the block is moving at constant velocity, is that the mass times the acceleration is going to be zero, okay? So this equation is going to be equal to zero. So we should put, um, before we have done this, we should have stated that the direction of motion, which is uphill, okay, so we can say uphill, uphill is positive. That means my force F is going up the hill, it's positive, and then my FG parallel is going down the hill, so it's negative, so when we add them together, a plus and a minus makes a minus. So F minus Fg parallel is going to be equal, which means that F is going to be equal to the parallel component of my weight. So the parallel component of the weight is going to be the mass, which is 4 times the acceleration due to gravity, because weight is mg, times the sine 
of 30 because that is the angle of the slope. So if you put that into your calculator, you should get the force F equals 19,6 newtons. Okay, so that's 3.3.2. Now it says to you, okay, now they've changed the situation now. So every time they change the situation, we should ideally redraw our force diagram. Okay, it says to you the same block is now pulled up a rough incline. The moment we see this word rough, we know we are going to have friction and the block is moving. So it's going to be kinetic friction. So the same block is now pulled up a rough incline by a constant force of 29 new 25 newtons acting parallel to the incline as shown below. The incline makes an angle of 30 degrees. The acceleration of the block is now 0 0,2 meters per second upwards. Okay, so we can still be using up here is positive because that is the direction of motion. It says calculate the magnitude of the kinetic frictional force acting on the block. So let's draw our force diagram again so that we can figure out what's going on. We've got this F here, which is 25 newtons going up the hill. Okay, now because it's a rough surface, we've got kinetic friction acting down the hill. The block is on a surface, so we're going to have Fk, the nor um, Fk, she says Fn, the normal force. And then we're going to have our weight here, Fg acting downwards. Now the problem is Fg is not in a line with anything. So instead of drawing in Fg, I'm going to draw in its components. So here is Fg perpendicular to the plane, and here is Fg parallel to the plane. And that should probably be a bit bigger than the friction, but I don't have space to write here. Okay, make sure all your arrows are touching the block. Now we can see we have got three forces acting parallel to the plane. So we're going to go again, the block is accelerating, so we can say F net equals MA. We're still going to say uphill is positive, so the force that is uphill is the force F. What forces are going downhill to add them? To add them, they are both going to be negative, so a plus and a minus makes a minus. So F minus FG parallel minus the force of kinetic friction is going to be equal to the mass, which is 4, times the acceleration, which is stated in the question as comma 2. Okay, so this force F, they told you, is 25. Now, FG parallel, the mass of the block is the same, the angle is the same, so we could actually use this value of FG parallel that we calculated here, or we can substitute in the 4 times 9.8 times the sine of 30. We can just put in the 19,6, which I'm going to do because of space, minus the force of kinetic friction, which you're trying to calculate, equals 0, 0,8. So now, if you do some algebra, you should end up with the force of kinetic friction being equal to 4, 4, 6 newtons. Okay, and that's why I said to you this Fg parallel arrow should actually be longer than the force of kinetic friction because it's a bigger force and we should always strive to draw our forces accurately on our diagram. But sometimes space is a problem here. Okay, so we have calculated the magnitude, which is the size of the frictional force. Now it says calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the surface of the incline. So to do this, we're going to use that other formula, the formula for friction, which says the force of kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. So we've just calculated this force. Its magnitude is 4.6. We are trying to calculate mu k, which is the coefficient of kinetic friction, and the normal force. What is the normal force? In this situation, the normal force is equal to Fg perpendicular because those are the only two forces perpendicular in the plane. And remember, this Fg perpendicular we calculated earlier, the block is the same mass and the slope is at the same angle so this 33,95 can be directly substituted into there yes okay 
So 4 comma 6 equals mu k 33 comma 95. And then if you put that into your calculator, you're going to get a mu k of 0 comma 135. Now remember mu, which we can round off to 0 comma 14. I see the memo didn't round it to two decimal places, but normally you're supposed to round to two decimal places. Okay, so now remember mu is dimensionless, which means it doesn't have any units because it is a ratio of two forces. So mu just stays as that number there. Now it says to you, how will each of the following change in magnitude and direction? The weight of the block. Now what is the weight? The weight of something is your mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And your mass is how many particles you have. So have the number of particles in the block changed? just because we remove the force. Sorry, I didn't read this, but yes. The force of 25 newtons acting on the block on the incline is now removed. So we've just got the block and the slope now. So it says, how will each of the following uh, quantities change in magnitude and direction? So the weight, there is going to be no change in either magnitude or direction, okay? Because your weight is simply how many particles you have, multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity and so they didn't suddenly take this block to the moon they didn't suddenly chop it in half so absolutely nothing has happened to the magnitude or the direction of the weight however the acceleration of the block previously we were pulling the block up the slope with an applied force we've now taken that applied force away so the only force we've got going down the slope is going to be the parallel components of the weight of the slope so that is going to accelerate it down the slope. So the acceleration is going to change direction, okay? It's going to change direction to be down the slope. So this is the opposite direction. And then what will happen? That's the only force acting in that direction, okay? Oh wait, I forgot to say there's still some friction here. The friction will have changed direction now as well. So the acceleration has definitely changed and I would say it has increased because we've now got quite a large force going down the slope with no nothing to oppose it. So it's going to change direction and increase. And now you can't really see this here, but it says what's also going to happen to the kinetic frictional force. The kinetic frictional force is also going to change direction, okay, because it's now going uphill because the block is going downhill. But now what is going to happen to its magnitude? What does the force of friction depend on? The force of friction depends on the normal force and the coefficient of friction. And the coefficient of friction depends on the nature of the surfaces in contact. Now that has not changed, okay? And the normal force has not changed because we didn't change the angle of the slope or anything like that. So the friction will change direction but will have the same magnitude. And that brings us to the end of this question as well.